Hello everybody, I'm glad you're here today. I'm gonna to get right to it and bring you a dream that my dad had on May 11th, 2023. Before I bring you this dream, I want to tell you three things that are bothering me that I've, I've noticed today. These are red flags for me. Uh, they're on my radar as this is very strange. Those three things are, first of all, the missing fertilizer, 30 tons of missing fertilizer on that train. I find that extremely sus. I'm like, mm, I don't know what's going on with that, but that's not right. There, that's a red flag for me. Second thing is the survey flights that Monkey Works is seeing that's crisscrossing. Even he's going, I mean, I, even he's going, I don't know what this is. Now, he may know what that is, but he's not going to say yet. But um, the multitude of those survey flights is curious extremely curious and the third thing that I heard today that I find very very odd like way odd are the satellite phones given to the US Senate 100 satellite phones given to our senators in the United States of America what do they be needing satellite phones for that's all I'm asking why do they need these satellite phones it's not like that's new technology. So all of that today kind of heightened my alertness and I'm seeing things in the natural, in the secular that's going on that's like, man, this ain't right. And then the Lord gives us these dreams or these words um, of warning and teaching. And so that's the spiritual side of it. And it's an interesting, I never thought I'd live life like this. <laughs> and yet here I am. So um, I find that interesting. For the believer, we have nothing to be afraid of. And the Lord will provide everything we need. I believe that. At the same time, it would be prudent if you can to prepare your home. Water, food, uh, whatever, you know, just think about that. All right, I want to bring you this. I feel like I'm getting attacked by a bug. Uh, I want to bring you this dream. Uh, the overall, now this dream is not a, ooh, EMP or, you know, nuclear bomb or anything like that. Although there's kind of a, I mean, it could be. It could be interpreted that way. Um, mainly what my dad said, and he's 82. Uh, my dad said it, it's, uh, it, it felt like, it's never going to be like it was. That's kind of what this dream felt like. Now then, uh, let's just get into it. May 11th, 2023. My dad was uh, with a group of people and they were following this leader who was a tiny skinny guy. And they were headed to a meeting walking outside to a building. And my dad said, I remember being with you before. And the guy said, yeah, this is the building of, and it was some prominent individual. Uh, and my dad said, yes, he greeted us standing here with a bowling ball in his hand. And the guy, the skinny leader, he said, he laughed and said, that's all I need is a bowling ball. Kind of snarky. So they got into the building and they sat in two rows. And my dad was on the front row at the far right end. And he began, the, the leader guy began to talk. And as he was talking, there was this little boy in the second row. And he came walking down the row towards my dad and he came up to my dad and he said, would you like, uh, would you support me for, I don't know, something. It felt like, uh, you know, when, when, you're, when kids are selling raffle tickets uh, to support their athletic teams or their social groups, that's what it felt like. And the little kid, the little boy said, would you support me for this? And it was a raffle like a, it would be a drawing it was a raffle and uh he said it's only a dollar a ticket 
That's what the little boy said. It's only a dollar a ticket. And so my dad said, I'll take two tickets. Um, so um, the little boy, uh, my dad paid him, and the little boy went along the back row. And he was getting money from everybody that was sitting on the back row. And all of that was going on while the guy in front was talking. Now, my dad looked back up at the skinny guy. And he, the skinny leader was saying, we all need to get ready for the party. We can't do it today, but we all need to commit to doing it all day on Sunday. That's an order. It ended and the group was outside. The meeting ended and the group was outside and my dad said, I'm not doing it on Sunday. I'm going to church. And the others said the same thing. And they walked along and to the right of them was a field of brush and limbs and an abandoned wall of a building. So it was like ruins with all this debris around it. And so they decided, let's pitch in and do it today. So we were on a trail to the back of the area that needed to be cleaned up full of overhanging branches and stuff. So they had the sense that what they were supposed to do on Sunday, they were going to do that day, which was clean up this area. He said it felt kind of like a roadside park. So it was, it was, a, it was a wall, uh, kind of a crumbly building, and then it had all this stuff hanging over all these old branches and, and stuff. So, uh, so they all decided to pitch in and do it today, and we were on a trail in the back of the area that needed to be cleaned up full of overhanging branches, and my dad said, I can go get my chainsaw, but I'm not sure I can be back in time to work. So my dad called someone and said, put the chainsaw on the front porch, but he might be late, but make sure the battery was with the chainsaw. Someone wanted to just trim up and clean up just the front of the area, just what you could see from the front, and that will be enough for the party. So what they decided to do was just get the front part in order, not behind the wall, just the front. And what they did that, and they raked and cleaned it, and it looked like a roadside park. There, we don't have to do it on Sunday, is what they all said. And that was the end of the dream. Now then, here are some thoughts. And and I think, I think my dad was right in summing this up. It's never going to be like it was. And I think that's talking about our country. I personally think after March of 2020, it ain't ever been the same since then, and it's not going to. That's what, that's my opinion. Now then, I think this skinny guy leading the group is our president. I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. That's what it seems like. It seems like my dad had been there before. Like, this is familiar. This is my country. But it's different. There used to be a leader outside the building. There used to be a leader in our country. That, and he had a bowling ball. And my dad said it was a big... It, it was he had a sense that it was a big man it was a big prominent man but he was holding a bowling ball so i he and my dad and i were like why a bowling ball we don't bowl oh my gosh no we don't bowl uh so we're like why and when i was talking to god about it three words came to mind strike spare and gutter ball and then my mom mentioned kingpin which i thought was interesting so I'm wondering if there's going to be a time where there's going to be a strike which is going to divide us into people who are in the gutter and people who are going to be spared. 
I don't know. That just came to my mind as a possibility. If you have thoughts on that, please comment. I mean, I, I glean all this information from y'all. Y'all are helping me. Now then, uh, going on and talking, um, you know, there was a division, front row, like two rows. Another thing about, you know, that there's going to be a time of division. Either you're in or you're out when it comes to Christ. I don't know if that's exactly what that meant, but it's possible. I think the young boy getting the raffle tickets, I think that represents the younger generation. That this leader, who's up there just talking and talking, is gambling with the future of our younger generation and their safety. That's just what I think. And I think God is just affirming that in this dream. Uh, so, uh, the fact that my dad got two tickets, once again, um, I think that that has to do with the, that God is going to, Christ, we're going to be divided. Now, um, now, that we need to get ready for the party. Uh, we can't do it today, but we need to commit to doing it all day on Sunday, and that's an order. I wonder if the agenda of the party in office uh, is such that it does not coincide with our Christian beliefs. I know that it doesn't. And that in, in a way, many of us we don't we we are living in this country we don't agree with the laws that are being passed that go against what our our beliefs are and what god deems as sin so i'm wondering if that's like it's an order like it's an order for you to do this and the thing is about being a christian on the outside you can make us do stuff or whatever but you're not ever going to change our hearts for Christ. You can't touch that. So the fact that they all get together and decide no. And it's nearly like they kind of do the bare minimum here to clean up this area. I don't know why they were cleaning it up. A roadside park. I don't know. My dad was mainly struck by it. it, it did not. What you could see was not what it was. It was not what it appeared to be on the front. It was like a front. And if you could see behind, you saw all the, the ugliness. And I think that's what our government is right now. I think that might be what our country is right now. There's a front that might look all pretty, may look good, but behind the scenes, it's a train wreck. So um, I, I, want, I think that might be what that means. Uh, now, why did they want them to clean it up? I'm not sure. I'm not sure why they wanted that particular group to clean it up. Maybe we're the light. Maybe that's our calling. I don't know. But regardless, they only cleaned up the front so that they could go to church on Sunday. And, you know, the whole chainsaw thing, I don't know. He never did go get it. So, I guess there was no in-depth cleaning. It was just like surface stuff. I think that's about all. Uh, I think they were all real glad when we don't have to do it on Sunday. And for the Christian, you know, Sunday is, Sunday is the Lord's day. Sunday is God's day. Not not anyone else's day and you know i don't believe it coordinates with the sabbath exactly um uh, in the old law is saturday and i don't think it transfers exactly one to one um but that's just my interpretation but you know i do believe there's a day that you're supposed to rest and god made it that way you'll be more productive during the week if you if you do that but I think when my dad says, it's not going to be like it was. We are in that chapter right now 
I think. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm all alone here, and like my family, like we're just a little isolated group of people because we don't talk about this in our social groups very often. Um, but when you have, if you look at what's really happening in the natural, when you see the survey flights and 30 tons of fertilizer missing and the Senate getting satellite phones, what's up? What's coming? What party per the dream? I mean, get ready for the party. Like what party? What party was he talking about? Is that the party, like the political party? Or is there something being planned that we're going to be forced to live through? I don't know. I don't know. I think a lot of people are like, oh, I think one big thing's going to happen. And it might. One big thing might happen. One big attack, one big EMP, I don't know. But I also think it's possible it'll be a slow drip and it'll be chiseled away like death by a thousand cuts. I think that's possible too. So if you're braced for the one big thing, you're probably going to get tired and burn out getting ready because, I mean, it may or may not happen. But if just every day you do a little something to prepare your house, prepare your home. I know I put on a video about canning uh, and getting a pressure cooker. If you can't afford that, that's fine. Go buy a, a, a 99 cent can of soup and put that on your shelf. And the next time you go to the store, buy one more can of soup. Get a bottle and a Coke bottle and fill it, rinse it out and fill it with water. I understand the food grade stuff. So make sure your food grade plastic is whatever. Do the research. I'm not the one to inform you of that right now, but I am the one to warn you. Do what you can, while you can, without fear, in the joy of the Lord, rejoicing that He is Jesus and He saved us, and sharing His love with others. Live your life like that. You can be ready, you can be braced, you can prepare without being all jazzed up all the time. Pay attention. That's all I have. The next dream I'm bringing you is fascinating and full of hope. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait to share that with you. So it's coming. Until then, y'all stay close to Christ and raise your focus on him. Don't look at the waves. Just look at Jesus. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.